Hi there, Frank here for Amemek, and we received a very interesting comment here on our product page, which I'd like to share with you and share also my thoughts and comments on it. This video will be relatively short and incomplete by definition. So if you're interested in this topic, which is backtesting and the edge, then you should definitely dig deeper and spend much more time on it than we will do now. But just to respond to Hamish, who I had a quite a, an interesting conversation with lately about exactly this topic. Then he went away and he did the good work and he says that the system is okay, but he cannot or doesn't find any good results with backtesting. And uh, this is what I'd like to comment on. First of all, I appreciate the comment and it highlights the most important thing that we have to do here, which is finding an edge and then trading the edge. But we also have to discuss what is the relationship between backtesting and the edge? Is that the same thing? Can I find an edge just through backtesting? This is what I'd like to say a few words about. Okay, so let's jump into NinjaTrader. And first, I'd like to address this comment here that he can find an edge. Well, let's have a look. As you know, in general, our methodology we have been using it on the market for years, and we have thousands of videos, four years of videos every day, basically, showing you that this is a method that works. It has an edge. There's many real-time and forward-looking videos in the database, in the archives, that you can access anytime just by joining us. But back to this exercise here on Ninja. So first of all, can we find good results in backtesting, running, our product. Let's have a look. So I put BTX on the chart, on the strategy analyzer. I'm not going to fiddle with setting, guys. Everybody knows I focus on the four hour chart. I'm just going to use the full year from January 1st to today. And I'm not going to pick instruments. I'm going to put all the futures contracts in my database, I think 12 or 13 here. And we're just going to run the show on all of them. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to just hit run here and hopefully we'll find some results. In the meantime, let me say that no matter what the results will be, that's not an edge yet. It could be bad. That might mean that I still need to do some work and they could be fantastic. That doesn't mean that my job is done. But let's have a look here. So what do we find? We ran 13 instruments. First of all, it's lightning fast, you can see. So the full year, four hour chart. Here's the number of trades. So the first thing I'd like to comment on is that on certain instruments, 50, 60, 70, 38, whatever number of trades is not enough. So the first thing you may want to do is run it on a longer time period or smaller charts or more instruments if you want to get a larger database. But altogether, we have 858 trades here during the year. So that's, I think that's quite usable. We have a 50% accuracy just above. And as you will see, it's quite possible to run a profitable trading business with 50% accuracy if the win-loss ratio is on our side. Well, let's have a look. So what did we find? What I see here is that we have Five instruments out of the 13, which turned in a profit. Automated trading, no discretionary thinking, sideways markets. We trade, by definition, as you know, trending markets. So on many markets here throughout the year, there are sideways situations. We do have a chop filter, which is switched on by default. So some of the bad trades are skipped, but not all of them, of course, and there's no discretionary thinking. So that's one thing that we need to know. This is all done by the machine. Now, I would say 2.03, anything above 1.00 is a profitable performance. Profit factor bigger than one. The other thing is that I would certainly look at the total net profit, okay, but I would also look at the drawdown, which means what price do I have to pay mentally and financially to get this net profit? What do I need to risk 
to get this profit. Also, remember, this is just one slice of the past. It says nothing about the future. So there's no guarantee that this will repeat in the next uh, 12 months or so. Unique event in the universe, it will never happen again. But what we want is to, of course, find something that tends to be similar so we have a good chance of replicating the results or at least getting similar results in the future. To answer Ramesh's question in the first place, Ramesh, I already found five instruments just by clicking a button. So here it is. Five out of the three turn in a profit by default, and I didn't even do anything. It's the four-hour chart. Now, that may or may not be the chart you trade, but the way I see it, you see, the edge will not come to you. I have to find the edge. I don't know what your time frame is. Maybe your favorite time frame is the 14-minute time frame, whatever. Well, there's no guarantee you will find an edge there. Possibly you will find something you can use, but by definition, we as traders, we need to go where the edge is and we need to uncover the edge where the edge surfaces. For me, it seems to be surfacing. And in my practice, I know that I'm not saying anything. You go back to the archives, thousands of videos that I do know that there is an edge on the four hours. So these, these results do not surprise me. But we could play the game and I could run this on various time frames, tick charts, range charts, mini charts, whatever. I leave the work to you now. So I think I was able to answer your concerns about finding an edge. Here it is. Now, what does this prove? Unfortunately, not much. So Ramesh, you are right in that respect that the work is not done yet. This is a very important first step towards on the path of verifying the edge. Backtesting is step number one, but it's like a mountain. We are just in camp. This is just the, the start of the journey. So Ramesh, here it is, the back testing. Now, but there's much more work to be done. So first of all, what are the limitations of back testing? There's some uh, obvious things. So first of all, back testing is not reality. Back testing is just an imaginary situation. We never ran this. We never affected the markets. Our trades were never on the market. Every trade moves the market. This is just not reality. That's one thing. Second, whatever we did here, this is the past. What does it say about the future? Well, it might say something, but what it says about the future is limited because the future will never be the same as the past. Also, we have to look at the sample size. I would say this is not really big enough a sample size on any of these instruments for these results to be really well founded. You need to run it on more years or more or smaller charts. We need more data. And now also important limitations in the software. NT8 is fantastic. We're very happy with it, but it's just the nature of the software that when you run a back test, every order gets filled. In reality, many orders will not be filled. If you play with if you trade with limit orders, in the back test, all the limit orders, your prices hit, you get filled. Same with entries, same with stops or targets. In reality, your order is sitting there and it's the price is hit, but your contract is not hit. That cannot be replicated in the software because we don't have the order flow. So in the software, everything gets filled and that's just not realistic. I know you can include some slippage, but still that's just a simulation. So that's already a very important factor why you cannot really think for one second that these numbers are real. So backtesting is important. Backtesting gives us an idea, is a good foundation for more work, for further work. And of course, there's other functions you can do. Here you can optimize a little bit or walk forward very important techniques. You can delve into this deeper, of course, and Ninja allows you to do that and you should be doing that. Now, I also wanna say a few things about what else goes into the edge. Well, if you think about it, this is, even with risk management rules, it is automated algorithmic trading. We, not once did we press the stop button during the year, but in reality, if you think about it, if you, 
Imagine you're in a trading room, something like this. I'm just writing a blog post, but you're in a trading room and all these traders are algorithmic traders. But as we discussed many times, there's a stop button on every trader's desk. That trader goes for lunch, that trader has a headache or sick or doesn't come in or the market is not conducive to a certain trade to be put on the market. So one training routine all traders go through is to learn when to press the stop button, which means already a discretionary decision. Also traders, even with algorithmic trading, there are questions a trader has to answer, be able to answer all the time. How much to trade, if to trade, if to hold the trade, if to get out. All these questions are discretionary decisions which are, of course, can be drawn up in a decision tree and these professional experts know how to make decisions, rule-based decisions, but still with the human brain. So the point is that totally automated trading perhaps exists on very, very small timeframes and very, very large accounts, but for most trading situations, even institutional trading there is a discretionary there must be a discretionary element and the stop button just like on an airplane we talked about this so many times there is an autopilot of course but uh, there is a pilot on the plane and the pilot decides when the autopilot should be switched on or off same with trading what else goes then into the edge your experience Everything needs to be tailored for your situation, for your financial situation, for your life situation, for your age, your personality, your account size, definitely, maybe even the, the country or the market you want to trade, and possibly many other factors that would be that only you know the answer to. So there's so many ingredients, let's say 10 or 15. Backtesting is just number one an important step along a long journey. So I hope it helps, and I hope it helps Ramesh and everybody else who is interested in doing this work. Thank you very much, and mindful trading. Mm -hmm.